Hi, my name is Steve Houston and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, let me explain to you what we do here on a regular basis. And we really look forward to 2019, where we're gonna release a lot of really good stuff, I believe, that really will help a lot of people make a decision as to whether or not mortgage section and final expense is the right business for you, number one. And number two, we're gonna get into what it takes to be successful in this industry. If you're brand new to my channel, we discuss all things related to financial services, primarily focusing on the IMOs. We compare all the different types of IMOs. We talk about the products. We train on the in-home presentation, the phone script, everything it really takes to be successful in this business. If we're talking about the comparisons of different companies and different products, and the standard I have on this channel is, is that we provide third-party documentation to back up my opinions. Third-party documentation beats any conversation that you and I might have. The proof's in the pudding. If you're looking at two different comp plans, two different promotion requirements, two different contract rates, it is what it is. It's on paper. It's theirs against the others, and you can decide what's best for you. So again, we're going to provide that documentation uh, when it matters, right? So that's the standard we have on this channel. I appreciate you being here. If you haven't, uh, if you are brand new and you haven't already subscribed, I'm really looking forward to 2019. We're gonna do some things that are, I believe, really special. And if you're a current subscriber, welcome back. I appreciate you being here and I appreciate all the emails, texts, phone calls, comments, and likes I get uh, every week on these videos. So again, if you're, uh, if you're appreciative of the information, you're getting some of it, do me a favor, as always, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, mash the bell, you'll get instant notifications of live streams that I'm doing going down the road, running appointments, so you can really see what the day in the life of a mortgage session and a final expansion agent really looks like. Uh, also, again, like the video if you, if it, uh, uh, if you like the content, uh, give me a thumbs up, make a comment, and uh, as I said, uh, look forward to you being part of the community. This week, I'm talking about Set Your Sales for Success. It's a hard hat series video. That means I'm going to tell it like I see it, take the information for what it's worth. You may not agree with it, but I, it's just my opinion, and it's what I think is necessary for you to develop the right mindset in this business to succeed, right? So if you're watching this video and it's past 2018, we're into 2019, be sure to go back and look at the... Uh, video that we launched on New Year's Day, January 1st, 2019, where we launched a new program called Success Habits That Work. We're going to be focusing on what it takes in terms of personal development to prepare you for success in this industry. So before we get started on that one, this week we're going to talk about set your sales for success, right? And so look, why do so many people fail in mortgage station and final expense? Look, we all know the numbers. We talk about the numbers on this channel quite a bit, right? And the reason why is I feel that if you understand the numbers, you can then set the expectation and therefore you won't be disappointed. You will know how much activity is required you'll need to do in order to set your sales into the winds of success. The worst thing is people overhype and oversell this industry, but if you know the numbers and you know how much money you need to make and you can figure out how much money you're going to be spending on leads and figure out what you'll need to do in terms of production, then we can dial in the number of appointments that you need to have each week. And when we know that number, we can determine how many leads that you need to buy based on your conversion ratio, the average conversion ratio of the lead, and of course, then what your average closing ratio is. We can come up with a very simple formula where we can set you on target with the right expectations so you know based on that number, what you need to do, and then you can decide whether or not you're willing to do it to succeed in a business that will give you an incredible work-life balance. But we also know numbers inspire us, but they don't drive us, right? Uh, it, knowing the numbers is empowering, but they don't get you out of bed in the morning. They don't drive you to, to, to pick up the phone or go out on the next appointment. I'd like to go a little bit in a different direction and talk about some questions that I've been uh, on the process, getting started. Achieving the, the goal of being good as fast as possible with the different facets of this business. For example, making dials, going on, choosing the right products, going on the appointment, those type of things. Look, we talk about the process and knowing the numbers of the industry all the time. The numbers inspire us as to what can be done, right? What others are doing. The business has, model has been validated. We know closing ratios on the lead, what the average rep sells per week, the average APV 
per agent, et cetera. But the numbers, they never really drive us. They inspire us as to what is possible for one to achieve. You know, if somebody else can do it, then you and I can do it, right? And, and they're important, but they never drive us to action. That takes a dream. And I know it sounds silly. We've talked about it before, but I believe dreams drive us. We have to know what, you, what we're fighting for. We have to have a reason to get out there, right? Or, you know, most people call this dream a why, a reason why you're willing to do what it takes to be successful in this business. Some of you have been asking on me on text and on email, uh, I'm brand new. How can I be great at selling mortgage station or final expense? How can I get really good at this? How can I be good at uh, choosing the products? How can I be good in the home? How can I be good on the phone? How can I be a great appointment setter, making those dials and booking appointments? You know, those kind of questions are very valid questions. Precision and being good in the beginning is less about knowing how to do it and more about knowing what to do. You've got to get good at a few things in this business, right? Booking appointments uh, from the leads, buying the leads, selecting the right leads. Cash flow is king in getting your business started. You don't want to overspend on leads, but you don't also don't want to work free leads necessarily, and you don't want to work really cheap leads. There's a balance, and that balance is important to your cash flow and to your mindset, which the six inches between your ears is really, again, having the right expectation and being willing to make a solid, educated decision on what it's going to take, and then you have to decide are you willing to do that, right? Sometimes we make decisions and we set goals based on emotion, but when we really look down and see what it's gonna to take to accomplish that goal, we're out. So that comes down to having the right expectation. You gotta get good, like I said, at, at buying the leads, booking the appointments, but also running the appointments and seeing the people. Uh, get good at the relationships in the home, writing the applications and covering the family. That's it, it's simple to do. Remember, here's what I want you to know. What you lack in skill, what you lack in product knowledge, what you lack in money, what you lack in confidence, uh, you can make up in one word. And you heard me say this before, it's called hustle. Precision and being good and getting good early on in this business uh, can be spelled out in one word. It's H-U-S-T-L-E, hustle. You've heard me say it before, and I, it's, it's so true. You can cover up a lot of mistakes uh, by increasing your activity. Activity is king here, and imperfect action is better than no action at all. Get going and take that imperfect action, and over time, you'll get better. I hope you're hearing me on this one, because I know a lot of people check out about the eight-minute mark on YouTube, and we're past the eight-minute mark, and so many of you have already dropped off, and you've already killed your ability to succeed here by not being willing to invest 20 minutes in a video that might set your sales towards the winds of success. And I'm, take, be willing to be bad before you're good. Be willing to take an imperfect action. Get out there. You can't learn how to swim by running around the pool. You've got to jump in the water, start kicking, take the risk of drowning. And by doing that, your determination and your why, the reason why you're in this business, the thing that you're fighting for will not allow you to drown but you gotta get in the water and start kicking. So why is it that some that join this industry and have success suddenly stop doing the activities that created the results in the first place, the results that they got in this business and that they told me that they were working for? That's always baffled me. It's confusing to me as to what I'm missing. Why would people stop doing something that is working and potentially can lift them to a much better place, a much different place financially. Give them time with their children. Give them time with their families. Give them time with their wife that they otherwise don't have. You know why your boss has that time? Because you sold out, that's why. He's able to take the vacations. He's able to take the whole week off between Christmas and New Year's. They're able to go to, to, to Hawaii or to Bora Bora on vacation because you sold your time to him. He's got you working so you create the income that he needs so that his life is perfect. That's what most of you don't want to hear, and I'm sorry if it, if it hurts people's feelings, but you're selling out to that job. Now, I'm not trying to embarrass you or talk you down that you've got to have a job. Look, I've had jobs. I'm just saying you have to understand that that's 
why you want to be in the position of being the person that, that controls your life by being an independent broker, by controlling your life, your time, your work-life balance increases, and you control your income. You're not selling out to somebody else because as long as you have that job, you're creating a lifestyle for somebody else. That's just the, the way it is, right? And so why do people stop doing something that can possibly lift them to that different place financially and a lifestyle beyond their dreams? And then I figured it out. We talk about how incredible it is that we have a metric-based system, meaning numbers. We know the numbers. If we know that the numbers can't beat me and I can't beat the numbers, they are what they are, but I am empowered by them because I know without a shadow of doubt what it's going to take. And I, you know, I can improve my numbers as long as I know what they are. I can't hit a target I cannot see. Everything we do in this business, if you're doing it correctly, is based on a law of large numbers. Knowing these numbers, such as the average closing ratio of our A leads, right? We know this number, and after hundreds of thousands of leads and thousands upon thousands of families protected, the number rarely ever changes. So you can base the number of leads you need each week, depending on what you want to earn, on that number. Because it's been proven. It's a law of large numbers. Not week to week, not day to day, but over thousands of agents, over a long period of time, the law of large numbers. We know what the average APV is. We know the average agent submits in business each week. Uh, having this information is great. It makes your income predictable. You can predict your income by the number of leads you're buying and calling any given week. You can give yourself a raise. And that's what I love about this business is that it's so metric based. That once I learn some basic skills and I get very, very good uh, at a very simple process, right? Like for instance, getting good at, at converting those leads into appointments, becoming a great appointment setter, right? choosing the right products, going to the home, make the same presentation every single time, writing the apps and getting them from Smith to commission. Once I learn those things, they're with me for the life. So if I want to increase my income from one week to the next, it's very simple. I buy more leads. I talk to more people. I set more appointments. I run more appointments. I write more applications and I make more money. I haven't, I don't need to learn any new skills once I get the basics down and I'm going to make more money. I can scale my income to whatever I needed to be any given week based on increasing my activity. Take an imperfect action. You can cover up a multitude of sins with increased activity. Listen, all of this is important and we all should want to get better, become better agents, but go out and make a mess of it. Who cares? You'll get better. I promise you, just keep at it, but take the action now. So what is missing? That's what this whole video is about. Here it is, I'm gonna reveal the secret. It's not the how, it's the why, right? It's what moves us into action. Every time I look down at my planner, I go to the bathroom and brush my teeth, I see that little sticker on the wall that says, I know what it is that I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for the, my family. I'm fighting for when I'm, when I'm gone, they, the income that I've created through this industry and through, through this business passes to them. So I can never quit. I know what I'm fighting for. It's the why, it's not the how. It forces us to take our efforts to the next level. It's what stretches us to be better this week or last month, getting better every single month. It's about the dream. What we don't talk about much is understanding that none of the numbers really matter if you don't have a dream. Look, what we don't talk about much is understanding that none of the numbers really matter if you don't have a dream. Something that drives you. If you don't like the dream, you think it's silly or, or whatever, dreams matter. We downsize our dreams every day to fit our wallet when we go out and go shopping for Christmas. We convince ourselves that we really don't need that large house. We really don't need that boat. We really don't need that motorhome. We really don't need that new car because we can't afford it. So we downsize our dreams and convince ourselves that we really don't want it. Rather than focus on the why, not the how, and increase our activity, be willing to take an imperfect action and go out there and do whatever it takes, no matter what, I will until I'm gonna succeed in this business. Find something that drives you, and maybe it's not material possessions. Maybe it is leaving a legacy, financial legacy for your family that you can pass on to them once you leave. Whatever, I know at my age, that's what I'm building right now. I know what I, the activities I'm putting in right now 
will take care of my family long after I'm gone. And quitting is not an option and neither is failing. So you see, numbers will inspire you, but they will never drive you. Maybe your dream or your why, I don't know what it is. I'd love to have you put it in the, in the columns if you're willing to reveal it. For getting involved as an industry to begin with was a dream of a better life, of being debt free or not being afraid or scared of the mailbox, right? And getting bills that you can't pay, an IRS uh, audit or an IRS collection effort, whatever it is, uh, or, or your car's being repossessed or foreclosed on your home. That, some, that drives me. I don't need any other motivation except for the fear of a bill I can't pay or someone taking something away from me that I, that I cherish, like my home, like my car, like my lifestyle, right? Or maybe being able to take that vacation that you've been talking about for years or that honeymoon you never took, whatever it is, or being able to send your kids to any college of their choosing and not be afraid of what college they're going to choose or maybe have a reliable car. For some people, that's what it is. You've got to have that stuff in front of you. Or maybe being able to have that Christmas where we just came off of a Christmas here where you can buy the things that you want to buy for your, uh, for your wife, or your partner, your kids, or your friends without having to look at the price tag. Try that sometime. Go out and buy what you really want to buy and not look at the price tag, right? You may have to put it back <laughs> before you get to the counter, but just I want you to feel what that feels like. The dream of having your picture uh, hanging from the roof of the convention center for your particular IMO uh, that's showing that you led a team to victory. Look, for some of you, I know you're thinking that, you know, dreams are silly. It sounds like network marketing. That Look, I believe every man or woman has a dream, whether or not you want to reveal it. But I also believe that many of you have put that dream away and hidden it, right? And called it stupid and it kind of explained it away. Or, you know, dreams are for other people or dreams are people that were born on the right tracks or they're born in the right neighborhood. I believe many of us downsize our dreams to fit our broke wallet. And I believe without a dream, without knowing what you're fighting for every day, nothing will drive you through the failures, the setbacks, the letdowns, the obstacles that we all have. I've been doing this business for a long time and I still have days where I want to quit. I quit at least once a week. It, get used to it, get numb to it. It's part of the business. It's part of any successful business, right? Most successful people have failed more than they have succeeded, but you didn't see it. You didn't see what it took to get them to that particular point in their life where success was evident. You got to fight through and grow through things, not just go through them to reach success, right? Because success is found on the other side of failures. If you always cut and run and use the same old excuse, well, this must not be for me. I hate that. Anytime you are successful at anything, the winds of resistance will show up. And these whys and knowing what you're fighting for will keep you in the business. But if you don't know what that is, you're going to cut and run the first sign of an obstacle. The worst thing this generation has ever been taught is, is that if you are struggling to succeed, it's probably not for you. Put it away, quit, go find something else, right? It's clearly not for you. It has been sold on this generation and it's simply not true. You, you have to go through failure and success is just around the corner, but most of you quit at the first sign of failure and you quit three feet from gold from what success was right around the corner for you. Try this approach. I will be successful at this. I will call leads. I will keep dialing until I get good at using this script. I will until no matter what, whatever it takes, I am going to become a great appointment setter, right? I will go on appointments and I will get in the home and figure out how to present these products until I start having success. I will until, it's not about the IMO, it's not about my agency manager, it's about me. It's all about me. I'll take 100% responsibility and I'll never quit because I know what I'm fighting for, right? You have to be willing to face failure head on and keep pushing through until you find your success. And it's different for everybody, right? Success is different for everybody. Right. Running from opportunity to opportunity will only keep you on the run. With every success, there is a story and you will create your own story. And the story is about the obstacles, the challenges, the failures that you had to endure and overcome to finally realize those dreams and find success that you've been looking for. Look, 
set some goals for 2019, write them down, make them specific, production goals for the week, production goals for the month, increase it by at least one every single month, be intentional, be relentless, and know what you're fighting for every day when you get up. Look, many people in this industry have learned the know-hows and applied them and changed their business and their financial lives forever and set themselves on a path of prosperity with work-life balance. It's not a scam. It does work. It has been validated. It just hasn't been validated yet by you. But none of them did it without doing the things that they were not comfortable with or faced a day where they simply did not want to pick the phone. They did not want to go on that appointment. They simply didn't want to get out of bed. They didn't want to get in the car. It was cold, it was snowing, whatever. We all face those obstacles and the successful people are no different. The difference is that that successful person did what the unsuccessful person is not willing to do. We all face the same choices in life. Many of us face one of them every day. And the difference between the ones that take action when they at least want to is that dream, that why that drives them, that's posted on a wall, that's written on a post-it note in front of them every single day. They know what they're fighting for and it moves them and it drives them into action. The end of the year is near. I challenge everyone to figure out what it is that you're fighting for in 2019. The thing that drove you to consider this industry in the first place, find that emotional moment in which you thought of something better that maybe you could achieve here in mortgage station and funneling expense. And remember, where the hottest point is, it's at the bottom of the coals of that fire burning. You have to dig deep and find what it is that you're willing to fight for. It's not good enough to say, well, I want work-life balance. Well, I want to build residual income or passive income or to be debt-free. You have to know why you want those things. Why do you want to be debt-free? Why do you want to have work-life balance? Is it to be able to provide your family, maybe take care of a parent uh, or parents, or maybe a sick family member, a charity? Dig deep and find what really is burning you, right? Then write it down. And I mean write it down everywhere. So when you wake up in the morning, you see it. When you shower, you see it. When you get in your car, post it on your visor, stick it on your speedometer. Wherever your eyes land, you want that reminder of what it is that you're fighting for every day. So there's never a question that you will until no matter what, I will do whatever it takes. No matter what, I will until I find success right? Look, Angela and I have post-it notes everywhere in our house, <laughs> in the refrigerator, next to the toilet, in our shower, in the kitchen cabinets. So when we open the door, we see our why, our dreams every single day, several times a day. It's never too far from our mind's eye. We are constantly reminding ourselves why it is worth it and what we will have someday. If we stay the course, stay focused on the activities, we know the results are inevitable. Because when the times are tough, and they're tough for us all, doesn't matter what level you achieve here. You will face tough times, you re your resolve will be tested, there is no get rich quick scheme, it's a, get it's a get rich slowly opportunity. And you will have to pay the price for success. We all do, right? And that will be your story that you can tell your kids, your grandkids. And if you ask anybody that's ever achieved any kind of success, they all have a story and it's different for everyone, right? So we've talked about the know-hows. Now all you need to do is know your why, what motivates you, what is it you're fighting for? What is it you're willing to fight for? You see, when you walk into my office every day, you see the airplane that I've been wanting to build for years, the house that Angela and I have had in front of us every day for years, and every single accomplishment we've ever achieved. We're driven to it by knowing what we're fighting for every single day that we got up. So when that phone got heavy, or Don, those leads got tough, or leaving the house that night was difficult, you wanted to stay home, right? Uh, all we needed to do was look up from our desk, and there it was. We get in our car, there it is. We take a shower, there it is. We open the door to going out of the house, and there it is again, a reminder. The reason why we would be willing to do something we didn't want to do at that time, and we took action and kept moving towards our dreams, our why was very clear. Without it, 
you begin to understand why people, when they have everything they need, do nothing. And I'll leave you with this today. You can have the best technology in the, in the industry. You can have the best lead system in the industry. You can have the best training in the industry and they can provide you the best home office support staff all the, and the best products, all those things. The one thing that you've got to bring to the table or none of it matters is your desire, your why, your reason for fighting. Know what you're fighting. Now, as I close the video, I want to leave you with this, and I'm going to bring these books up on my next video too because I believe in these books right here, and I believe you should all be reading. Leaders are readers, plain and simple. If you want to control the six inches between your ears, you've got to spend 30 minutes to an hour every single day reading a book. Bread for the head. That's what I always say. The first one is The Augmentito, The Greatest Miracle in the World. I'll have these books listed in the description. The next one is How to Have Confidence and power in dealing with people. Great book by uh, Les Giblin. The Parable of a Pipeline. You wanna know why you need to build a network? You wanna know why you need to pursue passive income? Burke Hedges tells you in this book called The Parable of a Pipeline. Another book from Burke Hedges, who's a friend of mine by the way, so full disclaimer, is You Inc. Discover the CEO Within by Burke Hedges. This will turn you from an employee mindset into a business mindset, something that you'll need because you're in business for yourself as a mortgage station and final expense agent. So get that book. You Can't Steal Second with Your Foot on First, another book by Burke Hedges, fantastic book, talking about why you should choose to become independent in a job-dependent world. Critical book, get it. How I Raised Myself from Failure to Success by Frank Bedker. We all in the insurance industry read this book a multitude of times. And then Go for No by Richard Fenton. Yes is the destination, but no is how you get there. That is what? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books. Probably get them all for less than a hundred bucks. hundred dollars is worth it for you to invest in your success. Invest in you. You can never go wrong by investing in you. I look forward to 2019 with all of you. I know this is a long video, but I'm sure that it was worth it to some of you folks. Again, if you haven't subscribed yet, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, mash the bell for instant notifications, comment, like, and share the video. I appreciate all of you. Bye-bye now. We're at a drive to 1,000 subscribers, so do us a favor and share it out. I appreciate it, and I'm grateful for you. Bye-bye. You still here? I forgot to add the last thing to my video. So since you're still watching the video, I forgot one thing. Beginning of 2019, I'm gonna do a, a playlist series for someone that's looking to get into mortgage station and final expense, but has questions or concerns. And I wanna answer those questions and concerns on a video series. So what I wanna do is give you a copy of the You Inc. book by Burke Hedges for the best or top five questions that I get in the comment section in this video for the next 10 days. So when this video releases, let's just say we'll take it to January 15th of 2019. If you put a great comment in about a question that you want answered about this industry, I'm gonna send you a free copy of Burke Hedges' You Inc. book that will help you change from more employee mindset to a business mindset. I look forward to seeing your comments. Bye-bye.